I've had both experiences. Somehow I always feel like this thing sound a little bit just off. Yeah, occipital lobe in the back. Yeah, occipital process, I should say. In the front, you got your two fingers up your nose, just like a shot of tequila. I've had both experiences. I was just watching my dove and serpent Sagittarius bonus tarot reading, and somehow this passed through my mind, and it was just a bit of an epiphany. Not like it, wow, you know, a light flies off your head, and you're like, holy crap. Well, obviously I've known this. I've just not been paying attention. It was revelation in its own way. I've had both experiences. Somehow it made me think about how when I was in the army, you know, uh, and there was a guy that was my NCOIC, Master Sergeant Knox, in my section. He came in and he just fucking hated me. And I respected the man very much. You know, I've told this story. He was an intelligent man. You know, it's not just somebody that stayed in the military because they got their wife pregnant. The one that they brought from their hometown because they were lonely in basic training and somebody would write letters so they got married. And then the wife comes down from a small town into a place like Fort Bragg where there are just men everywhere. And she starts banging them all and she gets pregnant and somehow he thinks it's his so he has to stay in the military and he hates being in the military. That's not Master Sergeant Knox. He came from ten see he was repelling without without gear down fucking cliffs and shit before he ever joined the military he was an intelligent man that loved what he was doing i respected him highly but he couldn't stand the sight of me this guy fucking hated me it, he's the guy that said to Arnold, my roommate, who is also in my section, that Arnold came to me the one day and said about me, he says, that Alderquist, he says, yeah, he's got to be a genius because nobody can be that stupid. And I was like, wow, that is a fine compliment because um, I'm not as stupid as people think. Jeff Kreif told me in sixth grade, I'm sneaky. Archie, you're sneaky. I was like, oh, huh. So I guess that's it. This guy couldn't stand the sight of me. But I realized as like a 19-year-old kid, you know, somewhere in that age range, I realized it doesn't matter if he doesn't like me. I still respect him. And I thought maybe he'd come around at some point. And then we ran into each other in Iraq. He was command sergeant major down in the uh, 18th Airborne Corps, I think, um, six, uh, down the road, 20th engineers there. He was a command sergeant major for them, and we ran into each other in Iraq, and he still treated me like a shithead. I said, I guess this guy will never fucking like me. And that was it. Got out. Went to college. Lived in England for a while. And one of my professors there, he was, uh, he was somebody that just couldn't stand the sight of me, Stanley Barron. 
and he was a man of great respect. He, he got an Albright Fellowship Scholar or something like that. I don't know. He was somebody that was special. I liked him. He couldn't stand the sight of me. And I'm like, well, it doesn't matter. He'd treat me like shit in classes because I'd bring up things that we're not supposed to be questioning. He just thought I was just a pain in the ass. And it was that next case of me saying, doesn't matter, I still respect the man. And then one day while we were out in the moors, I think we might have been in the moors, don't go into the moors at night. Uh, there was a whole group of people and we'd just done a paper and he came up to me and I just had some altercation with some grandmother. She thought she was special because she was a grandma and I'm like, I don't care. My grandma's a bitch. That doesn't make you any better. She didn't like that. She threw water all over me. Ah! And Evan, he, see, here's the thing. That woman quit the program and went fucking home. <laughs> Got rid of another one. But, uh, you know, he came up to me after this paper and he patted me on the back and I'd heard this about this guy before. I, well, no, I heard about it after because I had to have it explained to me by one of the other students that knew him. He said, you got a perfect, I thought he was going to give me shit about the grandma, but he didn't care about that at all. He took me off to the side and he says, I want you to know you got a perfect score on your paper. And I'm like, okay. He thought I was a fuck up. Gotta be a genius because nobody can be that stupid. But I got a perfect score on my paper. I'm like, yeah, big fucking deal. And then I hear from one of the other students are like, oh, he doesn't give anybody perfect paper scores on papers. He doesn't give anybody perfect scores on papers. People that are, you know, 4.0 student and above, they come and complain to him because they didn't get a perfect score on the paper. He's like, you didn't get it right. There's only one way of being perfect for this guy, evidently. And I exemplified his notion of perfection. And by sitting there and not fucking hating him all this time because he didn't like me, you're gonna hate somebody because they don't like you? You have to question it. Roll with it, man. Because I didn't hate him for not liking me, the time came, oh, which couldn't happen with, with Master Sergeant Knox, who became Command Sergeant Major Knox. That's the highest you can get. He came around to respect me. And there was, not saying he respected me, but there was respect between us that, uh, that allowed it to just flow. So it happened. I've seen it happen in my life. Ah, I've had both experiences. I'm expecting to see this friend of mine called John Pod in my mind. He's Elton Dwight, Dwight Elton, whatever the fuck his name is. And another friend of mine that I, I can't remember his name. I, I only know him. We'll be doing a podcast tomorrow for uh, Bullshitting and Demitting. D A M I T T E N. It's Michigan. Bullshitting and demitting. We've done a few of them before. Uh, they're out there somewhere. We're planning on doing that tomorrow as I travel. But this guy <sighs> talked about it with him the other day when I spoke to him about this, we talked about it. I didn't think much of him when I first met him. He's like 18 years younger than me. And I, I was, 
however old I was at the time, I, I say he came in cocky. There was something about him that rubbed me the wrong way. And so I never gave him much respect from that, that, at that meeting. Then I saw him some years later, and I saw him, and I'm like, oh, it's this fucker again. There was something about him I didn't like. And as it turns out, even on that first time of meeting him, it came around, I think, and through the years, we've become very good friends. And what I realize is that he did the same thing I did, and I did the same thing they did. Um, he didn't give up on me just because I didn't have a good fucking notion of who he was. He didn't say, well, fuck you too. I don't know what goes through his mind with this or what did, but the fact that he kept being who he was, who he is, and I missed it right at first, we've come around and I have been become Dr. Stanley Barron to him being my J.R. Charles request. I respect him. I love him. I trust his judgment. And this cannot happen, this sort of thing. If you don't have people on both sides of it willing to just accept that maybe, you know, like, what about Bob? You know, sometimes you try to call someone and this phone is out of order or whatever. Please try again later. It's that. All I'm saying is uh, I've had both experiences. And, and it's truly wonderful. <laughs>